Hello, it's Saturday the 13th of October 2012. Do you know, I can remember what year it was then for a moment. I was, I was whisked back, boys and girls. I was whisked back in the TARDIS by Doctor Who to last year from, I had a flashback, boys and girls. I have a flashback and that's what you get. When in your thirties, you go out to raves all night long and do naughty things in clubs. You mustn't do it, young people. You really mustn't, because you get flashbacks. For a moment, I had no idea where I was. Well, a very, very good morning, good evening, good afternoon to you. Yes, on this Saturday, the 13th of October, 2012. My name's Chris Reard, and this is uh, United Kingdom Talk. And I'm wearing a new item of clothing today, boys and girls. I do hope you like it. It's it's an item. It's it's a hooded shirt. I didn't know you could get such things. I think I'm looking quite quite good in this actually today. A hooded shirt. It's like a blue and white checks thing, and uh, I'm going to take my hood down now. Uh, it, it, uh, uh, first of all, it does look. You can, you can make it kind of look fairly. Um, what would the word? Uh, is the word trendy? Is that a word? Or chavvy, perhaps? I'm a little bit chavvy. I am, of course, the queen of all chavs. Or you could even make it look like a little red riding hood by putting it like, sort of opening it up like that, because there's two strings, there's two drawstrings either side. I look like one of those, you know the Jewish people? And they've got those, I don't know what they're called now. I I must ask my best friend Ronnie, he's Jewish. They have these things hanging down the side of their ears. I can't remember what they were now. We saw loads the other day. We was in uh, North London at an area... Oh, Golders Green, that's OK. Uh, a lot of uh, wonderful Jewish people live in uh, Golders Green. And you see them all walking around there, and they have the... They're so ab- absolutely immaculately dressed. You know, with the, with the black the black coat on, the little twiddly bits of hair by their ears and hats, and, and all very smart, really, all very smart. Not like us old English people, dear. I mean, we really are tramps, aren't we? Well, possibly I'm the only tramp round here. I do admit, you know, I, I don't believe in pretending to be someone you're not. I am from the gutter, and that's where I want to stay. <coughs> yes, please. I'm sorry I'm in one of those moods today. I'm, I'm feeling quite mad because I have been shopping. I have been shopping. Not only have I been shopping in a shop, but just the one, a shop. I've actually spent a little bit of money this week. Not too much, because we don't like to go mad. Remember, there's a recession on. You mustn't spend. Money is not for spending. It's not for spending. Certainly not for giving the electric and gas board. Do you mind if I just log into another computer just a moment, please? I've been doing... I'm doing updates on the computers as well. Oh, they take forever, don't they? Just a moment, please. Logging in with my very, very special password. There we are, and that'll be all ready for later for me. Yes, I've been shopping. Uh, as well as going to shops, I love ordering stuff online. Do you like that? I mean, you don't have to spend thousands and thousands of pounds, or even hundreds. Just a little bit of money, and then a few days later, a little parcel comes to your house. I love it! Knock on the door. Ding dong! And there he is, our friend Mr. Postman with yet another parcel for your Chris Redden. And this week I have ordered, and they are here already. I've got all my things next to me ready to show you, boys and girls. Look, do you know what these are? Can you hear what they are? Those of you that just listen. Oh, oh it's gone everywhere now. Can it, can it, can it? I bet you'll never guess what that is. Come on. Those of you that are just listening, those of you that are watching will know anyway. So you're cheating, really, aren't you? Can you close your eyes for a moment? Close your eyes. What are these? You'll never, never guess. They are baby onions. Ba- oh, <coughs> bits going everywhere, unfortunately. Baby onions for planting in my garden. Now, I have tried onions already this year. Not very successful. Not very... The bulbs just didn't seem to get very big. In fact, the only thing uh, I have been successful at uh, growing in the garden, really, this year, is runner beans. There are loads of them. They just keep coming. They just keep coming. And I told you I worked out the secret to um, uh, getting loads of runner beans is literally to keep picking them. You have to keep plucking them off that plant here. Pluck them off, and then more just come. It's all to do with the reproductive system. I'm not quite sure what. I mean, you make it wonder, actually, if that would happen to humans. You know, uh, you pick bits off these, these plants and more grow. 
So why isn't it with, with like, the human body, why is it if I was to suddenly pull my arm off or cut it off with a knife, another one wouldn't grow, would it? Why is that, then? So how comes plants have all the fun? You'd cut a limb off, another one grows. Not with humans, dear. No. You cut an arm off, that's it. You're disabled. Hmm. Funny, isn't it? That's how nature works. Anyway, so I've got my onions... Uh, and it says it, oh, ever such a long growing period, it says on here, plant from September to early November in well-drained soil, not subject to waterlogging over the winter, plant in drills, do I need to get my electric drill out for this? Plant in drills, leaving approximately four inches between sets with 12 inches between rows, leaving the little tips of the set just visible, the little tips must be showing, little tips, talking of tips... And another word that is similar to the word tips, I nearly had a, a, a little, a little, little shock, shock this morning. Um, all most of my family now I can do video calling with, either on the Apple iPhone with FaceTime, or we also use uh, an app uh, which is available on other um, uh, uh, phones other than the iPhone called Tango. Tango, and we can do video calling. I was trying to call my uh, niece this morning on this, and uh, she answered the phone. I said, uh, uh, and she didn't. She didn't answer the video, so uh, I stopped that. And then a few seconds later, the phone rang, and it was my little niece Tracy, Tracy Clifford, or Mummy Tracy, as she's well known, as she's known now rather, as she now has a child of her own. And I said to her, "Why didn't you answer the the video call?" And she said, "I didn't want to give you a shock." And I. She, and I said, well, what shock are you giving? Uh, and she says, I've got two pumps attached at the moment <laughs> for the baby. Oh, dear. So she said, I have no idea what these were. So she had to explain to me on the phone. These are things apparently attached to your lady's breasts. And it sucks the milk out and for the baby. So I'm quite pleased, actually. I don't really want to fall into the thing of seeing my niece topless. Thank you very much. I don't know how these people get on. Um... You know, who have their daughters and that in on page three of the Sun and that. I, I don't. I mean, is that? I, I, you know, if if I had a daughter, I haven't got a daughter. If I had a daughter, I really wouldn't see her half naked in a newspaper. I, that would just totally and utterly distress me out. Would it do you? Would it you? Is that a male thing? If you was, I'm sure there are people watching or listening to the show. Are you someone's mother? Okay. When they, if they haven't already, get to 18, if you was to see them topless in a paper, knowing that they were earning lots of money to do this, would that bother you? It would bother me. Oh, my word, it would really bother me. Would it you? Is that just a, a perhaps a, what, what would you call, perhaps a, a fatherly instinct in me coming out there? That I wouldn't want to see something like that. What, what if I knew, I wonder, what if I knew she was doing it, but I, I, I refused to look? Would that be, a, no, it would still, no, it would, that wouldn't be any better either. I would still feel the faint same way. But of course, I suppose children have to get on with their own lives and decide what they want to do, don't they? Who is it for us to, to dictate to them once they're past a certain age, I suppose, what to do? But I, I really wouldn't be comfortable with that at all. I, I, more than that, I would be absolutely horrified to know that a daughter of mine had got themselves out in the in the paper or something like that. Would it you? What do you think? Are you a mother? How do you feel about that? I'd be very interested to know your views on that. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Never be afraid to join in, boys and girls. I like to hear your little faces, your little bits of tone and your little writing. Send them in. Always please put at the bottom of your email or your message, whatever method you use to say it, please put your name and where you are. Sort of town and city. Don't need exact address. I mean, there's nothing to win here, dear. You know, there really isn't anything to win. There might be something around Christmas time for you. There might be regular viewers and listeners to the show. There might just be something around Christmas I am investigating into a little gift for you. Ah, oh, it's all just gift. I mean, it's like a charitable introduction here. It really is. Anyway, so I bought onion sets. And they have... To, that's what I was saying to you. Oh, what have I just dropped now? Just a moment. Oh, my mobile phone. Yes, uh, these onion sets, it says, 
plant from September to early November, uh, and then uh, lift from July. So that's a long time. September, October, well, it's October now. October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, June. That's ten months of growing. But it doesn't say where to plant them. Do they need to go in... Um, oh, there's another... Oh, hang on a minute. There's another leaflet in the bottom. Just a moment. One moment, please. Oh, there's my seeds. Oh, a gift for you. Cornflower seeds. How lovely. Cornflower seeds. When did you put these in? Um. Oh, it doesn't say. Oh, so by June. Well, when did you put them in then? Oh, so outside August to September. Oh, well, we're too late for those then, aren't we? But I don't know. Where do you put the onions? Do you put them in a shaded area or... Oh, hang on a minute. What's this? No, it doesn't say. Oh, oh well, I'm sure I'll look, at, look up on the internet. That will tell me when to put those in. Not very successful with onions so far. Um, the, the bulbs just didn't get very big. And a lot of them, I think the cat, the blooming cat, sat on them. Katie the cat sat on the, uh, sat on the actual plants. <laughs> the leaves bent over. They didn't grow after that. I don't think my... Because a lot of things haven't really grown that well. I, I'm putting it down to lack of sunshine. We really have a, had a lack of sunshine this summer. It's not been very pleasant at all. So I've got those. Uh, also, on Tinternet, I have ordered a few pairs of jeans. Now, when I say a few pairs, it's because my jeans are size 34 waist, and quite frankly, they are uncomfortable to wear. Do you know what I mean, boys? You know what I mean? When they're really tight and I find myself getting into the car and then you undo the top button and then sometimes the next button down as well and undo the belt and that's the only way I can get comfortable. Well, of course, when you get out, back out the car, especially if you're standing up at work for um, four or five hours as I do uh, every single night of the week, um, it, it does get uncomfortable. So I decided to order some size 36 waist jeans and here are the first ones. They're black. OK, and all these all these items were no more than 15 pounds each. OK, which I got on eBay. Nice black pair. Very good quality. It's like a shiny black material. I don't know about labels, but if, if, if you're interested, it's, it says Ito 9901 on the back. Very, very good quality jeans. These were 15 quid. Oh, oh, God. oh my face. One moment. Dear me. Um, I think they were 15 quid. No, there was nothing here that was more than 15 quid, OK? So that's those. These ones came yesterday. Again, they're like, um, they're like a very dark blue colour. The make of these is 7 Series, it says on there. 7 Series, it says on the back. Not the shiny material, more of a denim material, OK? And it's got 7 Series on my, on what would be my right buttock. And hopefully that will be pinched! occasionally by people if you do see me out and about and you see me see me do feel free to pinch one of my buttocks i do like that as i'm working thank you and no i'm not one of these people that is then going to take you to court for harassment at all i won't do it i will just laugh it off can't understand these people who write to newspapers and oh that's harassment oh get a life we're only having a laugh with you i'm always up for a laugh and i think I think another pair of jeans has arrived. One moment, please. A new bag arrived this morning. I love it. Getting stuff in the post. Again, these were... Let me see the price of these. Oh, it's got the... <coughs> I've still got the receipt of these ones. Again, off eBay. From Magic Street. Well, £14.99. Thank you very much. Was that include? Oh, that was including postage and packaging. 15 quid. Let's have a look at these ones. And these are, now I'm going to, I'm not going to shout this out because people might be listening. Come a bit closer to your speaker or head, who's listening on head, are you listening on headphones? Are you listening on headphones? Come closer a moment. These, all these jeans are, something like, all these jeans are 36 waist. Okay, 36 waist. Please don't tell anyone that. That's our little secret. 36 waist. Okay. Um, so these ones... Oh, very nice indeed. Thank you. I mean, you can't go wrong for 15 quid, can you? My best mate, he, he dies when I tell him I'm buying this stuff. He absolutely does. He's one of these people that won't, won't think anything more of spending 80, 90, 100 pounds on a pair of jeans. 
And I just think that's just absolute madness. And I've got another mate, he runs a pub, Justin. Uh, regular viewers and listeners to the show will know of him. Uh, it's been a friend of mine for, for, for a very long time. He'll spend £200 on a shirt. £200 on a shirt! What is it with these people? Idiots. Anyway, so here are my new... My new £15 jeans arriving this morning. Very nice. Again, they're like a, a dark blue denim. Now, these one it says premium raw blue jeans. Premium raw blue jeans. Size 36, 32. And they're, oh yes, very nice. They're like a, a dark blue colour. I'll describe, for those of you not, not watching, dark blue colour with nice white stitching on it. Around the pockets where the where the buttocks go. I like that word, buttocks. Do you like the word buttocks? Are you into buttocks? You are, aren't you? I knew it. I knew it. So, again, these are sized. I must say the bum on these looks rather large. But then again, I have got a large bum. What can you do when you've got a big arse? That's it, dear. No one wants to know anymore. Get a big arse. No one wants to know. Why is that? Anyway, so they were 15 quid and all. And uh, so that's three pairs of jeans, £15 each. Thank you very much. Shan't be buying jeans for at least a year now. Oh, and that comes with a free belt. How lovely. A free cloth belt. Remember, I am vegetarian. I, I certainly don't eat meat. And um, I'm now, now moving on to clothes. Boys and girls, I will not buy a leather belt. Those poor little pigs. Poor little pigs and cows that have had their skin used. So we can shove it round our waists. I don't think so. I have a cloth belt. <laughs> Smells rather nice. Thank you very much. And cloth belt comes with those jeans. Put those down there. That's not all, dear. More items have been purchased from my favourite shop. Sports Direct. Chris Reardon, Queen of Chavs. SportsDirect.com. In this very large bag, massive bag, is £62 worth of stuff. Look what I got for £62, OK? The shirt I am wearing, for example, with hood. The shirt with the hood, got that on, blue and white, thank you very much. Um, we got another shirt here, another blue and white shirt, they're all short sleeved shirts. Thank you, look at this, 70% off, thank you. How much was this one? Oh no, it can't be that price. Oh, £9.99 for a shirt. Lovely. Nothing wrong with that. Blue and white checks. I might wear that for tomorrow night's gig. Thank you. I have another shirt here. Thank you. Short sleeved. This one is black and red crosses on that. A little bit more expensive. Ten ninety nine with hood. Look, another one with a hood. How camp is that? Thank you. Ten ninety nine on that. And six t-shirts. Here we are. Six t-shirts because these are Slazinger, Slazin, Slaz, Slazinger. Is that how you say it? Slazinger, Slazinger t-shirts. Five pounds each, or in my case, two for eight pounds. Two t-shirts for eight pounds. Good quality. Have a little feel, you know. All in little plastic bags, and I bought six of those all together. I think one, two. I bought pink, grey. White, black, thank you. White, black. Oh, well, there's something else in here. I must have forgotten about. There's nice bright yellow one. I like yellow. Do you like the colour yellow? There's a yellow one. <sighs> Dear me. And there's a white one as well. Look at that. Two for eight pounds on the T-shirt. Oh, yes. What else is here? Oh, yes. A little little writing book. One pound forty-nine. Can't get one for that in Smith's, I don't think, dear. And finally, I spotted this wonderful, very small breakfast bowl. Sports Direct breakfast bowl. Two ninety nine, dollars dear. Bone China. Bone China, that's what it is. <laughs> How wonderful. So I've got all these things today, and I'm quite pleased about that. Because you know I'm not a... I'm not a great fan of clothes shopping. And I've said before, I can spot a bargain. I can add, I can sniff a bargain a mile off, dear. I can sniff a bargain a mile off. And I do feel I've got quite a few bargains here, so I'm quite pleased about that. And um, uh, no more shopping for a long time. They will last me for ages, that lot. 
believe, <laughs> honestly, the last time I went shopping for clothes, uh, the last po- uh, time I bought any sort of clothes at all, I believe, was last year around this time in Las Vegas. There we are. So all done for another year. How wonderful. I might get a few more short sleeve shirts. This, the one I've got on was about 10. I think this was an 11 pound one as well. But that great big bag for 60, 62 old, odd pounds, I think it was. That is what you call value for money. I don't mind spending money. I don't want to be ripped off. I certainly wouldn't pay any more than 20 pounds for a shirt. Absolute maximum. 20 pounds for a shirt. Thank you very much. Um, we've got a, I've got a sort of birthday happening at the moment. Uh, Evie. My lovely great niece is six months old already. Happy birthday, Evie the baby. Yes. And um, there is a, a little video. I haven't got the video to show you, unfortunately. But there is a video of her in a walker. She's in one of those walkers. You know the things? They sit the child in there. It's got four wheels and they run around her. She is so happy in that walker. It's unbelievable. What I'll try and do, perhaps for the next show, is get that video to come down the line and put it on the show for you to see. Because it's just a wonderful... She is such a happy child, that one. She is the daughter of my nephew and uh, my niece, uh, my nephew Gary, and my niece in law um, Stacey. I'm, I'm her god, one of her godfathers. I am the godfather. Yes, and my best mate as well, Ronnie. We were asked to be godfathers, so we do that. did that uh, for my um, uh, great-niece. And uh, my great-nephew, George, is now doing OK. Uh, no more problems. He hasn't had to go back into hospital because he got jaundice for a while. My niece, Tracy, is a lot better now. She is recovering slowly. And, uh, of course, uh, George is now uh, a couple of weeks old as well. He is the uh, son of my niece, Tracy, and her husband... Um, I suppose her husband would be my my nephew-in-law, would he? Ben. And everyone's happy there as well. And it, it's all just so wonderful. So happy birthday, Evie, six months old. For, well. And I was going to ask you, um, Christmas presents for babies. Now, around Christmas time, I have for a very, very long time taken the easy route and put money in an envelope for my nieces and nephews, which I intend to do this year. But what about babies? Is there some sort of... I, I don't know what to do, really, to buy them something or give them some sort of financial gift. In, in which case, what could I give them? I mean, could, do you buy premium bonds for babies or, <clears throat> or is, that, is that a minimum? Oh, hang on a minute. I think premium bonds are a minimum of... Hasn't that gone up to a minimum of 50 quid or 500 pound or something like that? I haven't got that to spend here. Oh, God's sake. Certainly not five hundred pounds. I don't know. So what? What do anyone know? Any financial gifts? Something that would increase in value for a baby? Any ideas? I'd be interested to know that because you know we've got a few mo- couple of months left to think about this now. But um, I need a a, a a present for my great niece Evie and my great nephew George. What could I get them for Christmas? Do let us know, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I mean, you do know, you realise you're getting old when your nephew and and wife and your niece and husband start having children. That's when you know you're getting old. That same little girl, I held her hand as she was walking across a car park in Bracknell once, has now had her own child. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, last weekend, I mentioned to you I was very much looking forward to a 50th birthday party I was uh, DJing at in a marquee. Well, I have to tell you, what a fantastic night. Possibly the best night of the year so far. We had a wonderful time. Everyone came in fancy dress. The ladies who bur- ladies, ladies who birthed, whose birthday it was, Helen... Uh, she was 50, had a wonderful time, was, was really pleased. I got this, this lovely email here. <clears throat> uh, her name's Helena. And she wrote, Chris, thank you one more time for Saturday. David, that's her husband, lovely chap to talk to. And I thought you were fantastic. Sorry it was a bit nippy. It was OK if you were dancing. I'm going to recommend you to anybody and everybody. Much love from all at Sage HQ. So thank you for this lovely uh, email to receive something like that from Helen, uh, from Helena. Or indeed uh, anyone <coughs> who you do uh, a little job for. I, I do feel the need to sneeze. And guess what? There's no tissues in here. Oh, hang on, there is. <laughs> oh, dear. Has it gone? Yeah, that's it. Just the one sneeze today. And it really was a good night. Um, 
uh, they had a, a buffet, which is a little bit different to the usual buffet. They weren't like plates of sandwiches and sausage rolls and crisps. They did a hot buffet, which I think uh, consisted, one of, one of the items was chilli con carne. And for, unfortunately, it was no vegetarian stuff. So I, I forced myself to eat beef chilli con carne, which was absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. And uh, the, there was also a choice of uh, a chicken curry. And I was talking to uh, the lady uh, at the end of the table, lovely lady. She's standing there, um, middle-aged lady, a bit like myself, uh, in, a, in a beautiful sari. And the Asian people, they wear those beautiful, beautiful saris. And I had a little bit of a conversation with her. And she's the one that made the, uh, the chicken curry there. And uh, very, very nice people to talk to indeed. Uh, other people at that party on Saturday, um, Helena's son, he came as a gladiator and her daughter came as a Dalek. Yes, we are the Daleks. You must obey the Daleks. Obey. And various other people. Helena came as, oh God, it's gone out of my mind now. The woman who wears black and has got a long cigar thing in her mouth, cig cigarette thing in her mouth. Oh, do, 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 do. It might come to me before the end of the show. Can't remember the name now of the person she was supposed to be. How annoying. How annoying. But anyway, virtually everyone there was in fancy dress and it was a fantastic night. The only thing was, being in a marquee, October, 11 o'clock at night, I was bloody well freezing. <laughs> But fortunately, I had predicted this and put in my car a nice warm coat. So I, I just put that on at 8 o'clock and we left it on all night, really. Lovely house. They've got beautiful big house in Harrow, um, uh, which is in Middlesex here in the UK, just outside of London, uh, or, or, or just inside of London, depending how you look at it, really. And uh, you went through the house and, and then straight into the garden. Uh, where the marquee was, you know, it was kind of attached to the house, if you see what I mean. Fantastic night. There was a catwalk in there, and we did some wonderful pictures. Uh, you might find some of the pictures uh, actually on my Facebook. Uh, my Facebook username, if you want to add me as a friend there, is Chris Reardon UK, all right? Chris Reardon UK is uh, my Facebook name. So, and tonight, uh, Saturday the 13th of October, I've got another party, which is... An engagement party tonight I'm doing. Uh, again, it's in the same sort of area around uh, Hayes, I think this one, Hayes or Harrow Hayes. That's all roughly the same area. And uh, I'm doing that this evening uh, between 7 and 11.30. Uh, together, I think I uh, want a little bit of karaoke as well today, uh, tonight. So looking forward to that now. Um, all right, let me see. Have I talked about everything I want to talk about there? Uh, oh, Kizzy the cat. Kizzy the cat, who you met last week, I'm afraid to announce, she has gone home. Yes, boys and girls, Kizzy, Kizzy has gone home. Or more more to the truth be, I had to get her to go home. Um, uh, Kizzy's owner, I, I, I saw her the other day, I said, um, uh, you know your cat keeps coming in. She said, oh, I'm ever so sorry. I said, what do you want me to do? She said, could you bring her down? I said, yeah, no problem at all. So I brought her down to her house and uh, left her there. Then she came back again. And um, this time, uh, unfortunately, Kizzy and... Uh, oh, there's the phone ringing there. <clears throat> so I'll ignore that. Kizzy and... Oh, just a minute. Let me just see who this is. No, nope, they've gone. Kizzy and uh, my own cat, Katie... We're not getting on too well, uh, which is fair enough. Katie has been kind of the cat of the house now for a number of years. And uh, I suppose it's really a little bit unfair to bring in another cat. So in the end, I locked the cat flap so that another cat couldn't come in. And I think eventually, in the end, Kizzy got, got the message and doesn't come down anymore. I, I'm a little bit sad about that because she was such a lovely cat and quite old. She's 20 years old, but she was such a nice cat. I mean, she really was. Never moaned, loved being picked up and spoken to and cuddled and purring away. Uh, and uh, elderly as well, bless her little heart. Sometimes she would come in off the back door. And you have to go up a step to come into the back door. And she would, she would sort of not quite make it and fall down. But um, lovely cat. I'm disappointed to see her go. But Kizzy has now gone home, boys and girls. All right. Uh, let me see. Oh, yes. Uh, there's a couple of uh, karaoke 
um, uh, what, not really a competition. What would you call it? A thing where you can vote for someone to do who does karaoke. And uh, someone's put my name up for it at the moment. And I wonder if I could take just a few moments of your time to ask you to vote for me now. Uh, if you're on my Facebook, you'll see it uh, on my wall somewhere where I'm asking you to vote. OK. Or indeed within the summary of this particular show, which you can find at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right? That's the main website for this show, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Just uh, vote for me uh, in there if you would do so, please. There's no prize or anything. It's just like a, a the prestigious thing of having made it to sort of the top and the, that would be really nice thank you very much i think i'm about fourth at the moment or something like that on to some emails boys and girls hello to charlie hides from charlie hides tv another wonderful little uh, youtube thing for you to have a look at who says congratulations great uncle chris on becoming great uncle thank you charlie she also says you said look up almonds and i thought you said almonds <laughs> that was in the last show, weren't it? Hello to uh, Roway. Roway. Hello, Roway. Who says, Hi, Chris. I am your radio fan in China. Recently, I came across a multiple choice question which confuses me. I'm dying for your help. It reads as follows. Eliza remembers exactly... Sorry. I'll start again. Eliza remembers everything exactly as if it, and the four choices for the answers are, happening, B, happens, C, has happened, or D, happened. Now, as soon as I see this question, I know, from internal memories, the answer would that be, happened, happened. And uh, Rowe goes on to say, the key says, D is correct. The reason is that it is in subjunctive mood. If the truth is contrary to what happens now, use did. If the truth is contrary to past, use use gadan. But I think had happened is right. I'm confused. Look forward to your views. Thanks. And that's from Rore in China. Well, the correct answer is indeed happened. OK, so the whole thing is Eliza remembers everything exactly as if it happened. OK, as if it happened. Just a second. Let me see this. Eliza remembers everything exactly as if it happened. That that is, in fact, the correct answer, as indeed uh, your question says. Why is it the correct answer? I've got to be honest, Rowe. I don't know why it's the correct correct right why it's the correct answer i just know it to be so in my head because i learned all that as a child i can't tell you why it's the uh, right answer but as soon as i looked at that question i knew it was the right answer uh, kind of instinctively so that's as far as i can go with that i'm afraid i can't help you any further with that perhaps your teacher wherever you're wherever you're being taught will know that um, presumably you're, um, are, are you, you, are you actually in China? What part of China are you in, Rowe? I'm dying to know whereabouts you are. Do you listen to this show to, um, learn English? Is that one of the reasons you listen to the show? I mean, I, I, I kind of wonder how much of what I say you actually understand. And how much do, do, do you, like, does this show, does anyone else watch this show to try and learn a bit of English? Do let us know, I'd be fascinated to hear that. Okay, same email address, Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Hello to Duffy512. I think that's Ian. Is that Ian? I'm sure it is. Who says, how do you manage to get a 55-minute file up onto YouTube? I thought the maximum file was about 15 minutes. I did enjoy your, I did enjoy your show last week. My favourite part is when you brought that new cat onto the set. Oh, she's gone home now, I'm afraid. She has gone home. I don't know where Katie is today. She's hanging around somewhere. Yes, um, 55 minute onto YouTube. Well, I'm afraid you can't. OK, uh, a long time ago, a few years ago, I think about three years ago now, YouTube had uh, various different accounts, one of which was a director's account. Now... 
you would apply to have a director's account and um, if you if they said yes, which I think they did to most people who applied, uh, then you were allowed to upload much larger and longer files. I don't know if there was actually a limit or not. Presumably there must be. I mean, you couldn't upload a 12 hour video, could you? Presumably. I'm just guessing that. But nevertheless, um, I applied for such an account and I became a director. Uh, and from that moment, I was able to upload larger uh, files or programs, whatever you want to call them. And that's why, indeed, I'm able to do that. Now, this facility was taken away about three years ago. So um, you, you, you could only upload a maximum of 10 minutes. I gather now it's 15 minutes. But, but... YouTube, in their wisdom, and very fortunately for people like me, decided that those people who already had the director's account would be left alone and would continue to be allowed to upload longer files. Although, you know, as long as you're not breaking any rules like being nasty about people or anything like that, I suppose. I, I'm, I'm sure there, there are some restrictions and, and things like that, you know. So uh, that's the answer there, I'm afraid, uh, Duffy. If you want to upload longer files to YouTube, I don't think you're allowed to. There are other sites that do allow you to do it. Um, Daily Motion is one. Just look up Daily Motion video or something like that. And also Blip TV. Blip TV. And I'm sure there are many, many others that will allow you to upload files um, with no time limit or file size on there. All right, Ian? Hello to Guillermo. Hello, sir. Nice to hear from you. He says, hello, Chris. When is your most recent visit you have had to the Toby Carvery? I have been salivating. Oh, I'm, do you know what I'm doing that now? Salivating. I think, I think I've got something to eat for pudding. Now, what was it? Oh, I know what it is. I have a rhubarb crumble and custard. Some custard downstairs for my pudding today, which I haven't had yet. I've had dinner, but not pudding yet. So I think that's why I'm salivating, thinking about that. I've been salivating, wondering about your next visit to that eating wonderland. <laughs> I went to a buffet-style place here in the States and got quite carried away eating. I was eating some collard greens and noticed, once I had practically hoovered the greens up, that there was a strong, salty taste. Do you know what? I get that sometimes as well, Guillermo, when I've been eating various things. A strong, salty taste in my mouth. That's quite a pleasant taste, to be honest. I like it anyway. The buffet place had salted the greens so much that they could be turned, they could be used to turn cucumbers into pickles. Needless to say, I chose not to return to that particular place. I decided to make healthier eating choices as I want to slim down and lose a stone or two. I currently weigh 16 stone. That's 224 pounds. I want to be able to have my shirt off at the beach and to have extra stomach. Be well and my best to you, Ron and the pussies. Thank you, Guillermo. Well, uh, last time I went to a, a carver, it was a few months ago now, and um, fortunately they do do a vegetarian option as well. Although you've got to be a bit careful, because I did go to a carver once and had vegetarian lasagna, but I also had the vegetables as well, and, they re uh, and the lasagna was beautiful, the vegetables were beautiful, but they just didn't go together very well. You understand what I mean? Um, so last time I went, I, ha I had a, a bean, like a bean um, pie thing, which was made out of various beans and topped with, I think, mashed potato, which had been put, put under the grill, and it was nice and crusty on top. And that was really nice, and I had that with the vegetables. Um, that was uh, that was actually a few months ago. It's quite a while since I've gone to uh, a carvery, but I do like going now, and we must, I must go again soon. Although I won't be going this week with him, because uh, my best mate, he's off to uh, Ireland for the week to spend time with uh, a friend over there that he's got. Hello to Matthew Joplin. Hello, Matthew, who says, Loving the sunshine at the moment, chilling in the warm, watching Mr. Reardon on United Kingdom talk. Hope you feel better soon. Yes, my lungs are clear once again. Listen to this. See, my lungs have emptied from the phlegm. Let me just do a lung check for my special gadget. One moment, please. <clears throat> 
special gadget for mer- ma- measuring lung activity. I usually get about 550. I should now blow into this asthma device and tell you the results. Here we go. <sighs> oh dear, 350? Maybe I should stand up. One moment, please. Oh dear, 450. So not as good as it, as it, as it should be. Uh, it should be at 550, so, um, so clearly not fully recovered yet, although I feel fully recovered. Certainly doesn't stop me swimming or anything, Matt, and the old asthma. In fact, after I've, I've, after I've been swimming, my lungs do appear to be better for a number of hours afterwards. I don't know why that is. If I was to stay in for a couple of days and not do anything, I would start wheezing again. <laughs> Which is, it's, it must be d- down to the cat, unfortunately, you know, but I'm not going to get rid of her. Um, but after I've been swimming, it does tend to clear your lungs out. It really does. Hello to Terry Housted. Hello, Terry. Who says, loving the talk show, Chris. Keep up the good work. We try so hard to keep it up. Terry, I hope you have no problem as well keeping it up, my friend. OK, lovey. Hello to Ryan Appleby. DJ Ryan is in the house. Yeah, check it out, man. Yeah, yeah, check it out. Yeah, yeah. Ryan is one of those DJs who stands there and says, Put your hands in the air, everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sexy and I know it. <laughs> Bit like that, isn't he? Ryan says... I felt I am long overdue. My niece was like that. She was a few days overdue. And then the baby just popped out. Are you having a baby as well, Ryan? He says, I felt like I'm long overdue to email you and your show. I hope you're well. And so nice to hear you back on United Kingdom Talk. You know, the strange thing is, you almost feel like my best friend when I listen to you. And we haven't even met nor spoke very often. This is true, but it doesn't matter. Good friends don't need to speak to each other every few moments. We just love each other. We love, not like that. We love each other. Anyway, I know you are a DJ, quiz master, karaoke host, etc., etc. I don't know you, um, I don't know if you know, but the last couple of weeks I've been doing club uh, and bar DJ work five nights a week. Of course you have. Do you remember, Ryan, all those years ago, when you were telling me, oh, I'm not getting anywhere, I'm going to give it up. And do you remember what I said? Don't give it up. Keep knocking on doors. Keep trying, and you will get there. And you have got there, I told you. See, I told you, I do feel I ought to take a commission from you, actually, Ryan. Could you pop a couple of hundred pounds in the post to me, darling? I will, of course, give you a receipt for your tax discs and things. Eh? Could you pop a couple of hundred pounds in the post to me? Eh? Eh? As a way of saying... Thank you. Thank you for encouraging me and my hard work. Or even better than that, perhaps I could have a regular percentage of your wages. Eh? (laughs) He says, Yes, the money isn't the money I should be on, always necessarily, but at least I'm earning enough to live on. Uh, Ryan, I've said this before to people, never let, if you're a DJ, singer, anything like that, do not let money be the most important thing. The most important thing is that you are enjoying what you're doing and giving other people a fun time. Money is secondary. If you've, if the first thing you think about is the money, you will not get anywhere. Not in the DJ and uh, singing world. Okay? Look at all these idiots on X Factor. What a bloody waste of time that is. Flash in a pan, bang, they get maybe a couple of years and then they're gone. They're gone gone somewhere at complete waste of time he says however all my work is invoiced so i'm needing to register myself as self-employed i know you've been self-employed for many years correct i haven't a clue what i can claim for expenses just wondered how it all works and any advice you can give me anyway hope to hear from you soon keep up the good work really have missed your show this is probably my second or third email in probably four or five years yesling and i will come and meet you one day as I think you are, I'm an amazing bloke. I'm not amazing. I'm not amazing. I'm universal. I'm universal. That means I go with anyone, to be honest, man. 
So, let me see, it's taken you four or five years to send this email, therefore, I will be responding to you in 2018. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, Ryan, first of all, you need to get in touch with your tax office, okay? Do not be afraid of the tax office. They are extremely helpful. All they want is their dues. That's all they want, okay? That's all they want. <laughs> You can claim for anything that is to do with your job. Example, as a DJ, you can claim for all your music, records, downloads, whatever that is. You can claim for the computer that you edit your stuff on, any microphones, anything like that. Do you drive to it? Do you have a car? You can claim part for the car. You can claim the petrol. You can claim the clothes that you use to perform in, because you're a DJ, a DJ is a performer. You claim for your clothes um, that you wear. I know performers that have claimed for face work as well, which you obviously don't need at your age. Uh, I, I, I don't think I'd ever have that done. I, I, well, I just see, you see so many ho ho awful, awful pictures of people, don't you? Hollywood stars who, j look at that Sylvester, uh, Sil Sylvester Stallone's mother, Jackie Stallone. What does she look like? I mean, she looks like something out of a horror film, doesn't she? Eh? I know people that claim for that. Anything that is anything to do with your work, you can claim for. Do you pay rent where you are? A proportion of that can be claimed for. Okay? So, simply speaking, if you've got a book... If you've got a book... Oh, I can, I can open this packet now, can't I? Let me just open this packet, dear. One moment, please. My my Sports Direct notepad, one pound forty nine mega value. It says on the top. And that is quite. Oh, can't get the damn thing open there. There we are. Open. Put that over there. Okay. So, simply speaking, it's a bit more complicated than this, but fairly simply, you have a book. And you draw. You know, on one side of the page. You would put down all your incomings. So, I know you work for Yates's Bar. Yates's Bar, Monday the 15th of October, whatever, £75. Uh, Tuesday, da 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 £100. Wednesday, da 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 £50. Whatever, okay? So you put all that on one side, and on the other side of the book, you put your outgoings, okay? Music downloads, £60. Uh, petrol, uh, £50. Uh, you know, portion of rent, da 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 da, and uh, and that's roughly how it's done. Now, all these things are tax deductible, as indeed would be an accountant. I highly recommend that you get yourself an accountant. Now, the best account accountant to get would be someone recommended to you by someone else. Okay. It's really as simple as that. And what he will do is, once a year, ask you to send everything to him in a box. You know, uh, uh, your your remittance slips from the various places that you work. Um, he will ask for your bank statements and receipts. You must, must keep receipts for everything. And I mean everything. If If you have to send a letter somewhere... OK, something to do with your job, DJing, perhaps sending something to someone. You put that stamp down on your outgoings. You may think it's only 45 pence or whatever it is at the moment. But, you know, you might send 10 of those. That's £4.50. OK. Absolutely put everything down because everything that you don't put down, every penny that you don't put down in that book, you are losing. All right, it's all very well. So it's only forty-five p for stamp. Yeah, forty-five p for stamp. Couple of pounds for a few pens. Uh, you know, another couple of pounds perhaps for. An, and this all adds up. You must put down everything, and you must get receipts for every single thing. You put them all in a box. Send them to the accountant. Uh, he does his job, and then uh, uh, he will fill in all the tax forms. You won't have to worry about a damn thing. And then he send you the stuff. You sign a few bits of paper, send it back, and the tax people tell you how much you owe him. Okay. What I would say to you, Ryan, most importantly to start now, is to start saving a quarter 
25% of all your wages. So if, for example, tonight you're working somewhere and you get £100, take £25 out of that, put it in the bank. Forget about it. Then when the tax bill comes, the money will be there. All right? But I'm going to say it again. You must keep all these receipts that you're spending stuff on. Very, very Train tickets, perhaps you haven't got a car. Train tickets, bus tickets. Do, do, do you get a bus to work or a train to work? You need those receipts, darling. OK, save them all up. Just stick them in a box and find yourself uh, an accountant. Uh, find an accountant, hopefully, through perhaps another DJ in your area that already uses an accountant. You can ask around. Someone will have a, a an accountant's name up there for you. And that's my advice to you, I think. Is that, is that all your questions uh, answered there? Yes, it is. And you'll pay tax twice a year, at the end of January and at the end of June. You must... Is it June? January, March, like May, June. End of June or end of July, one of the two. OK, I can't remember now. End of June or end of July. You must must pay your tax on time. If you don't, you will get fines. OK? You don't want fines. No need to pay more money than you absolutely have to. Just pay the tax they ask for before the date they ask for it, and you will not hear from the tax office. All they want from you is your money. Yeah, it, it, it is what they... You're not paying any more. In fact, you are paying much, much less than anyone else on PAYE. These people that have normal jobs, um, I don't know, work on the trains, the buses, work in a supermarket, they will. They pay a lot more tax than you or I. They can't claim for all these things that we can claim for. Travel, travel, you know, travel to do the job, equipment that you buy, your computer, uh, lights, even lights, the lights that are around me at the moment, you know, these I have been able to claim for from the tax man as part of my job. This show is advertising my DJing. Yes? OK? So all this, all this show is, is, is tax, it's all tax deductible. The camera I'm, I'm talking to you at the moment, tax deductible. Everything to do with my job is tax deductible. And you must claim for all of it because that's how it works. And if you don't claim, you are the one that's losing it. No one's going to come back to you and saying, oh... Oh, oh, you've got you, you've got a you, you've got a computer here that you haven't. No one's going to tell you that, okay? You will lose it. It's up to you to tell them. Very important. Hope that's been of help. Um, finally, on the show today, we have a, a wonderful uh, email here. Well, two more emails. Uh, one's from Tony, who uh, writes to me about amateur radio. Now, the email itself is a little bit full of technical jargon and that, so I'm not going to read it out. But, uh, Tony, thank you very much for this. Uh, I do appreciate that. The whole CB thing, eventually I took the aerial down and I came off it. Um, I did go on it for a while, but I, I found it difficult to get to get going again, to be honest. Number one, there weren't many people on it at all. And number two, the people that were on it were kind of talking to each other, and I, 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 I didn't feel I could go in on the conversation. Maybe that's an age thing before. Certainly, I remember uh, around 1983, was it? 1982, 83, when I had a CB uh, in uh, Roehampton. My handle was Matchbox there. I didn't have a problem. You know, I'd go on the side and, and you'd be in. Well, that's very different now. People don't seem to do that. And they kind of seem to have their friends already. And I didn't feel that I could get in on the action. So eventually I took down the aerial and um, put it away, perhaps for use at another time. I don't know, but I, I came off it completely, Tony. Um, but um, thank you very much for your email there, which is it's full of technical jargon, so I won't read that out because people won't know what the hell you're talking about. In fact, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Most of, in fact, I don't know what I'm talking about most of the time, Tony, to be honest. All right. Finally today, uh, an email here from the lovely Marge. Hello, Marge, in the US of A, who writes in Oklahoma, for my last birthday... The lady I work for gave me bathing supplies, which was nice because it was the expensive kind. There was plenty of that. You get all that at Christmas, don't you? Expensive bath type things. But later, I thought, was she hinting at me that I needed a bath? <laughs> I doubt it. But when you give people cosmetics or trying to improve their appearance, is that really a good gift? I love my bath supplies, as I stated, any day. Now, I know what you mean. My friend Ron says I don't shower enough. He says I smell. 
<laughs> he's, Ronnie has got, my best friend Ronnie, he's got a totally over-sensitive nose. You know, he can smell anything a mile off, and it's a bloody pain in the arse sometimes. It really is. It really is when he comes out and says, have you, have you passed wind or something like that, you know, as he's walking by. I was in his house yesterday, actually, watching the latest episode of Dallas. By the way, are you enjoying the new lot of Dallas? I am loving it. Absolutely loving it. And Cliff Barnes was in it last week. Cliff Barnes, oh, don't he look old? And <laughs> JR says to him, oh, Cliff, the years haven't been very kind to that face of yours. <laughs> I am loving Dallas. Here in the UK, Channel 5 every Wednesday night at uh, 9 o'clock, boys and girls. So I'm loving that. Absolutely loving that. Um, yes, the, the cosmetics, but, but, but Ronnie has a very, very oh, he's, oh, he's just, oh, he's just um, a bit above himself sometimes, I think. Can I say that? He's a, yeah, he don't watch the show. Don't watch or listen to anything I do, so I can say this. But he does get very, very above himself, really. Ronnie, very, very sensitive nose. Oh, that was it. We were watching New Dallas the other day. Oh, I think one of the cats passed wind. Oh, it did stink. Have you, <laughs> have you got a dog or cat who occasionally passes wind? And it awful? <laughs> Marge says, you do a lot of talking every day from your job and also doing the weekly video. Do you ever have any issues losing your voice? And if you do, what happens if you lose it at your regular job? <laughs> My voice has only completely gone once at work. So I guess I've been lucky. Now and again, it might be a bit raspy, as indeed it was at the uh, on last week's show. If you remember, my voice was sounding a little bit like that last week, but I, I do manage to get through it. Hey, that cat you, ha you, you had may be your reincarnated cat trying to be with you again. Well, I was thinking about that. You're talking about Kizzy, of course, who made an appearance last week. Who's, she's gone home now. But she, she was so like my other cat, but not her temperament. Because Tiny, she wasn't a really, she wasn't that friendly. She liked to be left alone. This one just loved being picked up and cuddled and stroked. March says, Kizzy is beautiful. You did sound tired last episode, and your voice was a bit raspy. Are you okay? Now, I was having a bit of trouble with the uh, asthma, but that's gone now. I think it happens when we went from hot to cold weather. It off often sets it off big time, I'm afraid. But um, it settled down nicely now. It's very frightening having asthma. You know, those of you who've got asthma, I'm sure you've got the blue puffer thing. Sometimes, when it, you know, it just doesn't work. For some reason, it stops working, and you... <laughs> Uh, it, is, it is a frightening thing, it really is. Marge says, cats are very territorial, as I have found to be true. I have six cats living together, which are siblings that grew up together. Well, Ronnie's got five cats. Two of them grew up together. Then he got another one, and then two others. Two, the two other cats he got from someone, uh, unfortunately, who died uh, near him, and he took those on. Um, that man bringing you the cat, is that your boyfriend? No, I don't have a boyfriend. Um, that's my best mate, Ron. That was my best mate, Ron. He's got neat tattoos. I'm thinking of getting a small... He's got a lot of tattoos, uh, Ronnie. I'm thinking of getting a small one. I'm part Native American and want my animal totem on my left wrist or arm. Not sure yet where, where I'll put it. I quite like tattoos. Yeah, but they're quite, aren't they quite painful to have those done? Oh, I don't think I could go for the pain, Marge. Oh, no, dear. We can't have pain, dear. No pain, thank you very much. Chris, I watched your show for four days straight after I'd thrown my back out last week. Only thing you do get irritating when in some regards is your nose scratching. That's okay, though. Uh, do I scratch my nose a lot? Uh, I haven't been doing it today. I think sometimes it does get itchy, my nose. Don't know why. I think... No, actually, I think, you know, look, as you get older, you get little hairs growing out of your nose and ears. I've got this little device, and it cuts the hairs out. The only thing is, when they start growing back, they get a bit itchy, and they're going like that, and I'll go like that. I'm sorry, Marge, I do apologise, darling, I'll try not to do that in future. I'm still trying to catch up, just not as much as a marathon as before. If I'm stressed or bored, I log on to your YouTube channel, get out my catnip smokes, and shazam! I'm all mellowed out. Catnip Snokes. I dread to think what they are. <laughs> oh, Marge, you are a laugh. I do like you. 
Do you have a list of foods that you can send me about what you eat? I'm interested in not eating meat anymore, but I found it hard to find a good protein substitute that I can eat that I'm not allergic to. Well, Marge, I, I don't know. You must have a large supermarket, Livia. I don't know if it works the same in the States as it does here. But here our supermarkets tend to have vegetarian sections. I eat uh, a lot of soya products, soya burgers, which I quite like, um, bean burgers, and corn burgers, and corn sausages, corn chicken pies, corn mints that I make stuff with, such as um, uh, corn chili con carne I told you about the other week. That There is actually a lot. Have a look around your local supermarket. She says, and again, your show is not a load of rubbish. Now stop it. Well, I think it is. <laughs> Chris, do you, have you ever had a scary stalker? Yes, I have. Um, and it's not funny. Uh, after a while, it really isn't funny. It's, it's, it's not a nice thing. You work at nights. Do you carry a gun? No, I don't. Do, you, do they allow you guns in the UK? They do if you have a licence, but very, 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 very tiny proportion has, has a gun. No, I, 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 I don't think I'd like a gun. I have an air rifle. Um, but not not a proper gun, and you don't uh, you don't need a license, but an air rifle. Although they do take your name and address, I suppose. So anything, if anything happened around here, then they could and, and they, they uh, presumably they would come round here. I don't know and look at the little. Um, they're not bullets. What are they? Pellets, I suppose. They, if they found a pellet, they'd come round my ass and see if it was the same pellet. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Don't know. We're allowed air rifles, uh, air guns, but not normal guns. No. Can you buy a permit to have one? Yes, you can. Um, I've no interest in owning a gun. Why would I want a gun? You know, I, I don't know. Um, you can buy a permit for one. I don't know if you have to pass any sort of tests or anything like that um, uh, to carry guns and things. But yes, you can get a permit. I've attached a photo of my Boston Terrier, the, the dog, that rides on the back of my Honda Rebel motorcycle 250. People <laughs> love, love, this, love this picture. <laughs> She's got a dog on the back of the motorbike. <laughs> That's a lovely looking bike you got there. Um, people continually take photos of her when I drive around. Thanks for another nice video, your friend in the wonderful state of Oklahoma of these United States of America. Long live the Queen. So thanks for that, Marge. Marge has also sent me a little request. And she wants me... Uh, to record her uh, an answer phone message, which I shall do uh, sometime this week for you, Marge, OK? No charge, darling. You did say you wanted to send money or something. No, I don't need any money, darling. I'm fine, love. I'm happy to do that for you for nothing. OK? Spread the word, Bolter Girls. I'd much appreciate it. Perhaps if you could put a little link on your Facebook walls or whatever uh, to this show, the unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, I'm going to go now. The email address, please, if you'd like to show, what, write in about anything at all, as always, is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Thanks so much for watching and listening to the show. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.